Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're talking about comparison. Comparison. Now, all of the body of Christ has different ministries. People have different ministries and people are all in different situations in the body of Christ. And so in that context, I want to encourage you about comparison and I want to warn you about comparison. Okay, the two verses we're going to apply are Galatians 6, 4 and John 21, 22. So let's just get down to the point. Okay, so verse 4 here in Galatians says 6 says, Don't compare yourselves with others. So this word don't means do not. It's very clear that we are not to do that. It doesn't say only do it sometimes. It doesn't say... Um, only do it if you feel depressed or if you're proud or uh, try not to do it. No, it says do not. So this is conclusive across the board at all times, 24-7 for your whole life. Do not do this. Do not compare yourselves with others. Just look at your own work to see if you have done anything commendable. So instead of comparing ourselves with others, the scripture is telling us only to look at our own work to see if we've done anything commendable or anything to be proud of. We can examine our work. We can evaluate our work. We can ask the Lord for feedback on our work. But we're not to compare our work with other people. And in the Amplified, it goes into... Well, it amplifies more, but, but one of the points it makes is that when you do this, when you refuse to compare yourself with others and you only look at your own work, over time, you will come to find personal satisfaction and joy in focusing on your work alone without resorting to comparing with other people. So that's what the fruit of this is. When we do what this says, this is what's going to happen over time. Um, I know a young lady, and she is a wonderful artist, and she can um, draw a feather on a piece of paper and leave it on a table, and people will go by and try to pick it up. They think it's a real feather. And she often won't focus on her own work. She's always focusing on what other artists are doing and how they're so good. And when she compares herself to them, she feels less than and she loses motivation to use her gift. So that's just one example of what comparing can do, comparison. So we're not to compare ourselves with others. We're to look only at our own work to see if we've done anything commendable. And from the fruit of that will be a personal satisfaction and joy in focusing on your work alone without resorting to comparisons. Why is this the case? Why does the Lord want us to do this? It's because the work that Christ has given you is between you and him alone. Why? Because he's the creator. You're the creation. He's the one who gives the assignment and he's the one who's gifted you for the assignment. You're the one that receives the assignment and does the assignment in his strength with guidance and all that, his guidance. So it's between you and him. It's not between anybody else in the whole world, between you and the Lord. And we always talk about one day, it's just going to be you and the Lord. There's not going to be anyone to say, well, he did this or she you know, did more than I did, or I did more than they did. It's none of that. It's just you and him. Okay. So one thing that we can take from this passage of Galatians 6, 4, talking about not comparing ourselves with others, what other scriptures does this go with? This goes really dovetails with Hebrews 12, 2. Keep your eyes fixed on Christ. Remember the term fixed? is permanent. It's not, you know, ADD all over the place. In your spirit, you are fixed on Christ. And you can just leave your eyes there for the rest of your life because that's where they're meant to be, on Christ. Why would the scripture tell us to do this? Well, because it keeps us going in the right direction and it also stabilizes us. It stabilizes us. Do you want to be stable? Well, keep your eyes on Christ. 
Another verse that is relevant here is Romans 12, 3, B, and it talks about thinking of yourself with a sober judgment in accordance with the faith that God has given you. God gave you that faith. So think of yourself with sober judgment. That means in agreement with God, with a sober mind, and in agreement with the faith he has given you. Each person is given a measure of faith, and that faith is given you to do the work that you're called to do. You have not been given the faith of Susie or Johnny or, you know, all these different people because you were not called to do what they're doing. Okay? So your faith is given specifically, and it's, it's distributed specifically in the amount and the proportion and every detail according to what the Lord is going to lead you to do with it. Because that's your gas that you're going to need to run the car, if you will. It, that's what you need to do what he's called you to do. So I want to look at comparison, and I want to present the idea that comparison, what I see, is that comparison is trespassing. Have you ever thought of that? It doesn't sound right, does it? But it is, and I'll tell you why. Comparison is trespassing. I'm going to tell you in a minute. And number one, and number two, comparison is destabilizing. When we compare, our eyes have to be off of Christ. And that immediately destabilizes us. And if our eyes are off of Christ, it can tempt us to trespass. And I'm going to explain these with a little diagram in just a minute. The other verse I wanted to go over is John 21, 22, where Jesus and John and the disciples are and Peter are walking together, and Peter is listening, and Jesus is telling him how basically one day he's going to be killed in a way that he won't like, or that he's kind of describing that you're going to die before you think you're going to die. And then Peter doesn't say, okay. Thank you for telling me that. He doesn't keep his eyes on Christ and keep his um, the response just between him and Christ. He turns and points to John and says, well, what about him? As if to say, well, if I have to die early, then John should have to die early too. And Jesus stops and turns around and rebukes him and says, what is that to you? What is that to you? whether I keep John alive until I come back again. It's none of your business, is what he was saying. It's none of your business. What is that to you? And then what did he say? Follow me. Follow me. Don't follow John. Don't follow your own understanding. Don't follow what you think should happen in your life. Don't judge what I'm doing in John's life. Don't judge yourself because of something that I've called John to do. No, follow me. Keep your eyes on me and follow me, and that's it. It's real simple. So we remember, we are sheep. We are sheep. What do sheep have to do to stay safe? They have to stay near the shepherd. Their eyes have to stay on the shepherd, and they need to stay close to him, and they need to be listening and following him. Why? Because we tend to go off cliffs or get stuck in the sticker bush or wander off and get attacked by a bear or a lion or something. So following him, keeping your eyes on him, keeping a sober judgment of yourself, remembering that God gave you the exact faith you need to do his will in following him alone, Forget about it. forgetting about everything else, following him alone. These two things I want to show you now um, in this little diagram I made. It's kind of silly, but it makes the point. Um, here are three different men, say. Man A, man B, man C. Each one of these men has a relationship with the Lord. Okay, The Lord's omnipresent, so he has an individual relationship with each of these men. The Lord has a relationship individualized with man A. He has another relationship a little bit different with man B. And he has a maybe very different relationship with man C. But he 
created each one of these men and he knows what they need and he has a plan for them. So what he does is he distributes faith to each of these men according to what they're called to do. What they're called to do. What is God's will for me? Well, he's going to give me what I need to do that will and that's it. Sometimes he'll give you more for other purposes, but usually he just gives you what you need to do what he's called you to do. And so that is boundary related. So faith here is distributed to the men according to the work that God has assigned to them. So for example, man A up here, maybe he is a builder or works in construction. He's very strong. He's sturdy. He likes to be outside. He likes to bang with hammers and all of that. Well, you could say that the Lord has given him the faith of a hammer to do the construction that he's called him to do or to do the building. So A has a hammer. Okay, what about B? Here's man B over here. What is B? He is called to be a doctor. And he either works in an office or he maybe he travels around to different countries and ministers, gives the free uh, care, medical care to the poor. Well, what kind of faith is God going to give him? He's going to give him the faith of a stethoscope. Okay, we got a hammer for man A and a stethoscope for man B. We come over here to man C. And what is he, what kind of a measure of faith has he been given? He has been called to play in the symphony for 40 years. He's going to be a part of that symphony. And he's going to be playing and making so much joy for people who come to listen and making CDs and just doing the work of the Lord in that way. Well, this type of faith that the Lord gave this man C is a saxophone, say. Okay? So they each have been given their measure of faith according to the work that God has assigned to them. Construction, medical, and some type of musical symphony work. Okay, so what if... Man A, with the hammer, says, and looks up to the Lord and says, Hey, what about what he has? He has a stethoscope. You didn't give me a stethoscope. Do you see how this is breaking a boundary here? There are boundaries here. And this, this A man is breaking the boundary by looking at him, examining his work, coveting his work, and then judging his himself by saying, well, you don't think I'm good enough to do that? Or, you know, he gets into all these mind games and all of this mumbo jumbo that's not necessary. So that is a type of breaking a boundary when you do what Peter did. And you say, um, well, Jesus, you've told me this is going to be my, the plan you have for me. But what about him? Isn't he going to die too? It's as if everything Peter was thinking had to be equal according to his own understanding. It wasn't God's will. It was Peter's will. And so that's why he was rebuking him. So do you see how this is breaking a boundary? Man A is not supposed to have a stethoscope because he's not supposed to be in medicine. Man A is not supposed to have a saxophone because he's not going to be in music. And by the way... All of these men, even within their own field, do not need to compare themselves to others. This musician does not need to compare himself to other musicians that play different instruments or other musicians that play the same instrument. Even uh, musicians who play the exact same instrument in the same symphony. You do not compare with them. This doctor doesn't need to compare himself to any other doctor. And this work or construction worker or builder doesn't need to compare himself with any other builder. He needs to get the orders from on high, receive the orders, and do what he's told. 
do as the Spirit leads and supplies you. So do you see how we can get into trouble when we take our eyes off of Christ and put them on a person? And then everything starts to go haywire. So if you're in a situation where you are tempted to focus on someone else and compare yourself with them, say you are a in a field and there is a friend that is doing what you're doing, or maybe uh, your parent, or maybe one of your children, or someone else, and you're tempted to compare yourself with them because you want to be better than them, or you want to be like them, or you're afraid that you won't be good enough, don't do that, okay? That will throw you off kilter, okay? Do not compare yourselves with anybody that means anybody. There's no exceptions. So don't compare yourself with others. You're unique, and God has a unique calling for you, and he doesn't want you to compare yourself with anybody else. You can get inspiration from other people, but comparison causes us to be destabilized, and it's a trespass. Say we are talking about our ministry, and we are planning our ministry, and there are some other people that are have a similar ministry to ours that work downtown where it's really dangerous and maybe they could get shot at any time if we compare ourselves with that ministry then we may feel less than because we're in a really safe neighborhood and we don't really have any stress. And we might think, oh, well, they have a higher calling because they're in danger and we really should be like them. We don't have enough faith. They have more faith than we do and we should feel bad because we don't have that kind of faith. Their position and their calling and their level of faith and their work has nothing to do with you. God, God has called those people to be in that dangerous area to work in the ghetto or wherever it is. And he's given them the faith to do that. And he's given them the protection to do that. And maybe some of them will be killed doing that. That's okay. That's God's plan for them. Your plan, if you're in the safe place or um, a luxurious place, it doesn't matter. God has called you to that. He's placed you there. And so he's going to give you the faith necessary to do that work. And so you don't need to compare your faith with anybody else's faith. You don't need to compare your, your work with anybody else's work. It's just you and the Lord. And so I want to encourage you in this to strengthen you. I don't want to see people destabilized by trespassing in comparison. Why? Because when you're destabilized then you can't do what God's calling you to do, right? If you're destabilized, you can't do what God is calling you to do. And if someone needs something from you when you're in a destabilized place, then you will not be able to provide that for them, okay? So it doesn't mean that you can never be destabilized. We're going to be destabilized living in a crazy, unstable world. But I'm just trying to maximize the strength and the longevity of your walk and your ministry and to minimize the times that you are destabilized. Because there will be some, let's minimize it. Let's minimize it by keeping our eyes on Christ, by thinking of ourselves in accordance with the faith that God has given us, not the faith that I've drummed up, that you've drummed up, not the faith that defines who we are. No, we're all in Christ and God's in control and he's giving measures of faith. The faith is to do his will. It's not to impress others or judge ourselves or get mixed up like that. Okay, so just remember this big picture. It's not your business. It's not your business. You don't need to worry about it. Everyone has been placed where they belong, and they've been given the faith necessary to do what God's called them to do. What they're doing and their level of faith has nothing to do with you. Nothing to do with you. So just let that be.
let God have that territory and that part of you that wanted to trespass and get all upset and, you know, have a pity party or whatever. But let's remember, do not compare yourself with others. And if you have a real habit of doing this, like with your siblings growing up, I know the girls, I have four daughters, and they would compare themselves a lot. And I always had to kind of give them this imagery of a beautiful garden. And one was a rose, and the other was a tulip, and the one was a daisy, and one was another flower. And they were all beautiful flowers, but they were all different. And so when the rose said, but I want purple petals like the tulip, you know, that would be a trespass. And you could say, no, you're a rose and your petals are red and da 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 da. So everyone is unique and everyone is different and we don't need to judge ourselves or others by comparing and getting our focus off of Christ. Okay. And by the way, the enemy knows that this is very destabilizing and so he will keep you in this loop. And it will demotivate you and it will minimize your effectiveness in the kingdom. If you have had a problem with this over many years and you've been, you know, with your siblings or with whoever you've been in the habit of doing this, you may have to press in into this part of your habits that you have and the way you think and the way you live and the way you operate. You may have to press in to this verse and ask the Lord to cause this verse to come into reality, for you to come into reality with this verse, cause this verse to be operative in your life, operative in your mind, operative in your soul. You can ask him and say, Lord, I want this verse. I do this all the time. I want this. I don't have it and I need it and I want it and I'm asking you to give it to me. And I will meditate on it or memorize it or something. But I just ask for that. I want this verse to be operative in my life, 100%. Do whatever you got to do, you know. And so you can do that if you've really struggled with this for many years. You may have to ask the Lord to intervene because he's totally willing to and he will do it for you. All right. I hope this is encouraging and I hope that you will consider moving in this direction because we do want the personal satisfaction and joy that the scripture tells us we will have in evaluating our own work keeping our eyes focused on Christ. Okay, that's what we want. All right, so I'll see you guys soon.